get started. Uh, uh, someone who's got those uh, black Bibles there in the back of the pew, if, uh, if I can get about ten of those. Uh, so if you can get them uh, to the end of the pew there where Miss Lisa is, somebody get them to the end of the pew there where Brother Johnny is, and uh, uh, David, I mean, not David, uh, uh, Dustin and Chandler, if you'll gather them up on the right there. Just get five of them, Dustin, you get the other five, all right? And uh, you pray for the girls, they're going to sing for us this morning, and uh, you pray for them, I'm looking for See? 
thankful he's worthy of our praise. Yes, Amen. Amen. And to God be the glory. Thank you, Mike. We'll just go to the book of Exodus this morning. Uh, chapter number 17. We'll Exodus chapter number 17 this morning. And I've been trying to study in the book of uh, Isaiah. And uh, knowing that our second lesson uh, in the little Bible will be in Exodus. Uh, compared to chapter number 2, the book of Isaiah, the book of Exodus. And I got hung up on this this week as I studied. And an old man of God told me a long time ago, he said, you don't study to preach. Now pay attention. He said, but you study for yourself. If a man don't study, then you can't prove yourself. So you study for yourself and you preach on the overflow. <laughs> I got a whole lot of overflow this morning. Amen. A lot of times when you're teaching, it's not true. <coughs> You're searching for something to teach, but the reason it's hard to find it is because what you're searching for, God knows what you need. So when you're searching, you're searching for you. Amen. So you've got to get right. You've got to get where you need to be with the Lord, where you can teach. Well, that's the same as preaching. I've got to be where God had me be for him to preach. So I've got to be filled. Then you preach on the overflow. Then you've got to be ready to teach. Then you teach on the overflow. Then you don't like get excited when you're singing. Until you're excited about what you're singing about. Amen. Right. That makes sense? Yeah. So you get filled, then everybody else rejoices on the overflow. Amen. Amen. See, we didn't start shouting for Dustin this morning until he started overflowing. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? He had to get filled up. Yeah. Then once he got filled up, we got in because he had a lot of overflow. He couldn't hold it off. So we started rejoicing on the overflow. You know why you testified this morning? Because it got real to you. Yeah. Once it got real to you, you testified on the overflow. Amen. I'm not thinking, but my wife made a very good testimony this morning. As a matter of fact, when that when we was having that week moment at our house this morning, that she testified that. I said, you're exactly where the message is this morning. I can't take no more. But you're exactly where the message is. Look, God spoke to her heart. I didn't have no idea what all God done there. But what I'm saying is, what happened this morning is somewhere between... The moment she had, and the time she got to church, she got filled up. Amen. So she testified on the overflow that God gave her. Because this morning at the house, she didn't have the old. Anybody listen to me? Yeah. We sit right here real deep. If I have this this morning from heaven, I really like to hear it this morning. But we got to get to the place where we realize it. We all, we all get to that place where we see. Right. Yeah. The pastor gets that place. Right. I see all those empty spots in the view this morning. And don't see those that still sitting there. The pastor gets that way. You know how I overcome that? I've got to let God fill me up first. Right. And then you can't get excited until a man of God gets excited about what he's giving. Amen. And when he's excited about what he's giving, you get excited on the overflow. Amen. And then you get filled up. You go out somebody gets excited on your overflow. Amen. Amen. And uh, so we're going to make these into some things this morning that try to just find the Lord is going to be all right. Amen. And uh, I ain't teaching tonight anyway, so I'm going to give it everything i got. Uh, the Lord showed me Dustin's preaching tonight, and he just found out. <laughs> <laughs> he stood up here this morning, and God said, you, you let that boy preach tonight. So that's yeah. what I'm going to do. Amen. And so sure as family, y'all going to sing. Amen. And Amen. you ain't going to sit down from singing tonight until you sing that we still got a song. All right? <laughs> and uh, so with all that said, everybody, everybody knows what's going to happen tonight. And so let's just worship. Everybody all right? And uh, uh, Sam Wayne Riverson reading the Word of God this morning. I just want to read chapter number 17. I uh, pray that God help us this morning. All the congregation, the children of Israel, uh, journeyed from the wilderness of sin. Now that does not mean today that uh, it's sin. I guess I mean if we know it, uh, falling away from God, that type of sin. Sin is actual uh, place here this morning, believe it or not. Uh, it is a place that scholars have studied and still are not in agreement today where that place, yes, I am, actually is, uh, uh, that Moses traveled through. Uh, but the significance of the word sin here, this place, is also a significance of the falling away from God uh, in the wilderness. Now, that doesn't mean this morning that the Bible is talking about the children of Israel coming from sin and falling away from God. Sin is an actual place, yes, I am. But we know, spiritually speaking, sin, yes, I am, the falling away from God is an actual place in our life that the Lord brought us when He brought us out of the wilderness. Yeah. All right? Uh, so there is a significance there. Uh, and I want you to see what the Bible said. After their journey, it's according to the command of the Lord and pitched in Rephidim. That word Rephidim, and uh, I'm going to give you a few definitions. I 
I know you're standing, but just bear with me. Rhythm is a place of rest. Boy, aren't you glad when you came out of the wilderness? Amen. The Lord had a place of rest. Amen. Bible said, and there was no water. T H E R E. Right where they're saying, there's no water. And so they came out of the wilderness, and they're in a place of rest, but it's dry. Amen. Wait a minute. We're going somewhere this morning for the people uh, to drink. Wherefore the people did chide with Moses and said, Give us water that we may drink. Moses said unto them, Why chide ye with me? Wherefore do you tempt the Lord? Excuse me, wherefore do you tempt the Lord? And the people thirsted there for water. And the people murmured against Moses and said, Wherefore is this that thou hast brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with birth? Moses cried unto the Lord, say, right, well, uh, right, uh, say, what shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. And the Lord said to Moses, go uh, on before the people, and take with thee the elders of Israel and thy rod. Wherewith thou smokest the river, take in thy hand and go. Hold, I will stand before thee up there upon the rock in Horah. And thou shalt smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it, that the people may drink. Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. He called the name of the place Massa and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel, and because they kept the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, Mina. And go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I'll stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses had said to him and fought with Amalek. Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. It came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed. Only let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on and Aaron and her stayed up his hands, the one on one side, the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. Joshua did come to Emily and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book, and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua, for I will utterly put out the remembrance of Emily from under heaven. Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi. He said, Because the Lord had, has sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Go back, if you will, in verse number 11. The Bible said, When it came to pass, Moses fell up his hand, that Israel prevailed. And when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands were heavy. And they took a stone and put it under him. And he sat there on with Aaron and her, stayed with his hands, the one on the one side and the one on the other side. And his hands were steady under the going down of the sun. And Joshua discomforted Emily and the people with the edge of the sword. Heavenly Father, as we come before you this morning, Father, we want to thank you for the precious word of God. Father, I pray God this morning that you would long this Lord a fresh and a new. Father, I pray God this morning that you'd help us to stand. God, I pray, Lord, have it all this morning, God, that you'd help us to stand. Father, I pray, God, that you'd fill our hearts and fill our souls. Lord, I pray that you'd stir us up in a mind in a special way this morning. God, I pray, Father, for your people. I pray that they feel with the Spirit of God. Father, I pray, God, this morning. Lord God, that you touch that on your spell more than they might be saved by your marvelous grace. Father, I pray you draw the sinner, Lord, under conviction that they uh, follow and see where they're at and what they need this morning get born again. Lord, that one out of your will be drawn closer to you. Father, the child of God will be excited, rekindled, restored this morning. The joy of their salvation be renewed to them. Father, in the name of Jesus, we'll be drawn in this place. We'll sure love you and thank you for that you do in Jesus' name. Amen. You may see it. And may the Lord have a blessing and read the word of the Son. I want to try to give you a, a, a foundation this morning on where we're at. I've got several points this morning, but I want to try to give you a foundation on where we're at. And I'm going to try to preach this morning uh, with an illustration of God will allow me to be able to do that this morning. And you pray for our voice and our throat and the whole. 
sold out. And that God help us here this morning. I want you to see that uh, there's a picture here this morning that I believe needs to be portrayed. Now, I want to try to paint that for you, uh, draw that out for you here this morning. Now, uh, if you stay with me just a few moments this morning, we've got a lot to rejoice about. Uh, but there is a heavy burden here that I want you to see. So, uh, that same fact that you went in with me on this, I want you to stay with me on this this morning. And I want us to be mindful. Uh, of what makes our mind full this morning, all right? Uh, be mindful of what makes our mind full. What are we, uh, what are we full of this morning? What's, uh, what's the, the taking place in our thoughts? And, uh, what is our mind full of this morning? And we've heard testimony after testimony uh, of that already this morning on how that uh, we get our mind wrapped around the pandemic and what's going on. And uh, forget the fact that God is still on the throne. And, uh, that he's still in charge and he's still in control this morning. And I want you to understand something here that uh, the Bible said in verse 1, all the children, of, uh, all the congregation of children of Israel uh, journeyed from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the command of the Lord and pitched in reverence. Now you can go back and I don't have time to catch up on all of this this morning, but what's happened here is that uh, Israel, I believe it or not, has grown a great victory. And uh, after a great victory, there's a place of rest. Uh, I thought you understand here this morning that in this place of rest is dry. And here this morning that uh, the water here is it, not there for them to drink. So obviously the children of Israel <coughs> think that Moses, the man of God, has brought them to this place and, and, and they're going to die here. And if we're not careful this morning, that's exactly where we get as a people, believe it or not, uh, whether we want to admit it or not. Uh, and, and I know I am one. I know I'm your man of God. And uh, you just have to bear with me a minute this morning. I'm not preaching a pity party, but we've got to get right down to the truth, okay? And uh, what happens is, is God leads us to many places of rest uh, in our Christian journey. Could you hear me right there this morning? There's a lot of things God brought us out of. Thank God there's a lot of dry places God brought us from. Uh, and God's brought us in the place of the rest more than one time yeah. in our journey with Him. Uh, but sometimes the water ain't like we think it all is. Uh, and we think, man, God's going to let us die there, or the Lord's going to let us die there. And uh, we begin to try. It, it ain't happening like we think it all happened. Uh, things ain't going like we think it all go. Or wait a minute, uh, He's preaching somewhere. I don't think I ought to be preaching. And He's plowing down the road. I don't think I'll be plowing down and we begin to chat. Wait a minute, I'm going to have to skip back over here. I said, verse 11, it came to pass. Moses held up his hand. The ears were prevailed. So what Moses, what the Lord told Moses to do is he said this. I'm going to give you a briefing and we'll go back and cover it, all right? He told Moses, he said, I want you to go up on the Mount Hall. And he said, when you go up there, he said, I'm going to give you some. He said, but tomorrow, whenever Joshua is a fight with his family, he said, I want you to go up on the hill. He said, I just want to take that rod that I've given you. I just want you to hold up your hand. Moses, that's all I want you to do. I don't want you to holler anything. I don't want you to smile anything. I just want you to hold up your hand. And the Bible said that when Moses held up his hand, Joshua prevailed. But whenever Moses' hands began to get heavy, yes, sir. and he began to come down, 
the man of God. Amen. Joshua would begin to be overcome by the flesh. Every time he looked back, he saw that Moses had his head up. You know what would happen? Moses would prepare. I want you to notice something this morning. Look at your Bible. The Bible said the rock of horror. That rock of horror this morning, that is a type of the life through the Spirit by grace. That rock is the, is the life of the Spirit by grace. You realize this morning that the reason the Spirit of God dwells in us is only because of the grace of God. Hey, listen, nothing outside of His grace. We are what we are by the grace of God this morning. Amen. Now notice this. He called the name of the place Massa and the river. Remember the reason he called that this morning Massa? It's a place of testing. And the river is the quarrel or the strife. I'm going to ask you something this morning. Have you ever been in a place of testing? Come on, brother. Hey, Cherry Hill back in church as far as I know. And as long as I've known it, I, hey, listen, before the 21 years I got here, has always been a place of rest. Hey, somebody, some elder ought to shout amen right there. It's always been a place of truth. It's always been a place of the Word of God. It's always been a place where the sword of the Word of God was held high. Amen. My friend, I want you to understand this morning. That Bible said that when they began to chide, they called it master. And the river was a place of strife. It was a place of testing. It was a place of quarrel. But the Bible said then came Emily and fought the leaders of the river. Hey, listen, he fought with them in their place of rest. Hey, that, that, who's the first person that shows up in their place of rest this morning? It's your flesh. Amen. Here's what happens this morning. Here's what happens. The man of God's trying to hold up his hand. And this morning we look around. There used to be somebody holding one up right there. Come on, brother. And there used to be one holding one up right there. Yes, sir. I ain't calling names, but there used to be one holding one up right there. Come on, brother. As a matter of fact, there's, there's been a few sitting right here. Used to hold one up. They sit here. And they used to hold it up. Anybody paying attention this morning? Why, why don't the man of God keep holding up the word of God? I'll tell you what, look right here. There's plenty of places for somebody to be sitting this morning and holding up the word of God. But the reason that they're not there this morning is they begin to look back. And the man of God begin to get weak. And there's nobody to stay up his hand. And he came down. And the flesh prevailed after I bid him. Amen. Joshua chapter on the battlefield. And if you, if you study that out this morning, that word Emily, you know the biggest enemy that Joshua's fighting out there on the battlefield. Hey, pay attention here. It's not Goliath. Come on, brother. It's not David facing Goliath yes, sir. Uh, with a stone and a sling. But it's that man you look at in the mirror every single morning. Right. He's battling against his flesh. Hey, there's a reason that out there in the place of strife and out there in the place of contention and out there in the place of quarrel this morning, there's a reason that Joshua was able to look back up on the hill and see Moses with the rod of God. He just said, I hope you're listening this morning. Moses wasn't up there with his own scroll. Come on, brother. Uh, amen. Yeah. Matter of fact, I go right back here this morning. And there's been several that stood and said something like this. This is the best church I've ever been in. Boy, I love my church. I, I wouldn't go nowhere else. I, I'd raise my youngins here and my family a lot here. But you know why they're not here this morning? Because of their flesh. They wanted something in their flesh more than they wanted the things of God. And listen, somebody, somewhere, was willing to put their hand down. Ain't nobody was standing up. Hey, I'll be honest with you this morning. Already my shoulders hurt. My neck's getting heavy. Hey, but I'm saying this morning, that word of God must be held up this morning. Amen. What's going to keep Joshua from coming off the battlefield? It's going to be that every time he turned around, he saw his man of God with his hand in the air. Hey, listen, Joshua didn't want to go in there in the tabernacle where Moses had been because he's a quitter. He wanted to go there where Moses had been because every time Moses came out of there, he had a cloud overshadowed him that had the Holy Ghost of God. Moses would hold up his hand. But if you'll notice 
to see his father said to him, but all this But then he says this. He said, when Joshua turned around, or when Joshua looked, that the hands of Moses.
Lord, just let me lead. Let me lead. If they need a new man of God, won't you send them a man of God? Let me get out of the way. God said, hold up your hand. Well, God won't believe you in that word. Right. Amen. Hey, I'm not going to my secret place saying, God, please take the word away. That's not what I'm doing. But I said, God, if I'm in the way, and I'm the one holding that, God, let me have it. You know what happens at, is every time we look at, you know what it is? At, it's the fact that seeing, yes, I am, am on it. The flesh is why they're not here this morning. Right. They're not here because of the men of God and right. the ladies of God and the elders. They're holding up the hand of God. Right. They're, they're not here because of man and his wife. The lady of God and his wife can't hold up one of those hands. They're not here because the deacons can't hold up his hands. They're not here this morning because they allowed Emily right. to overcome. Right. You know what happened, brother? She played on the piano. Whenever they started into the flesh in the battle of his family, they quit looking to see if the man of God had the hand raised. And if you go out of here this morning, I'm talking to you because you're a man of God. But if you go out of here this morning, you try to battle the flesh without a man of God, and without the word of God healed up, you'll be free. Come on, brother. If I go out of here this morning and quit holding up the, I'm talking about your man of God. Yeah. Quit holding up the sword of God, the word of God. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be overcome by the first enemy I meet. Amen. That flesh. Yeah. You'll be defeated this morning by Emily. If you don't hold up the sword, the word of God. I'll be honest, it's not a lot of More times than not, I need to rest. Come on, brother. I need to rest. But more than that this morning, I need to hold up the Word of God. <laughs> I sure would hate to think if you're bad in the flesh this morning. And you got down there on one knee and didn't feel like you could fight anymore. If you could still turn around and see your man of God was holding up his hand. Amen. Come on! Dustin, just do a little more. You got it, son. I ain't getting there. The Word of God is still held high. You know, I sometimes on Sunday morning I come in this dryer cracker juice. He played, he started laughing a tear. Oh Lord, he stopped and said, Yeah, go ahead. You know what that does? Amen. <laughs> oh, I've testified about it, so I'm going to give God some glory. You know what happened this morning? Bless the Lord. She got in the car and got testified. You know what?